So, stouts, CO2, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, volumes, pressure. What's it all about? Um, there's a few different things different with the stout we have in Ireland. So we're nitroing, nitrogenating our stout today. Um, we have two different versions of the stout. One for draft, which is nitrogenated, and the other for bottles, which is not the same. It's carbonated, same as all the other beers. So uh, nitrogen, it's all around us. Um, oxygen and nitrogen. Most of our atmosphere is made up of it, so it's cheap and available gas. Um, but we don't want the oxygen side in a beer at all, at all. So we need to run nitrogen at a purity of 99.95% um, because only the best will do. We don't want aging in the, the beer which we brought on the oxygen. So CO2 is very easy to get into beer. So here we have uh, the bottoms of some of our fermenters. And we'll just go up top, I'll show you the, I'll show you the whole room. So up in the walkway. So they're uh, stainless uh, 5,000 litre fermenters, five ton of beer in each one, roughly. Um, and the beer goes in there, the beer burps out CO2, carbon dioxide, as it's been made. The yeast creates equal volume of CO2 and alcohol. So a beer really can carbonate itself. So carbonate, condition, to put condition on a beer, it's all the same thing. Um, and we will close off the tank, so we'll blank it off part or a set way through fermentation, and this creates natural uh, carbonation in the beer. So the beer is carbonated by itself for the most part. Um, we may need to top up a very small amount um, after. So that happens through a thing called a spunding valve, which is this. So you see a water airlock. Um, you can see pressure gauge on it. And we'll just set the, the pressure that we want that to close off at. That maintains the pressure in the fermenter. Um, and the beer is carbonated itself. Now, stout. We don't want any of that at all. We want open fermentation so the tank is vented, excuse me, entirely through the fermentation process. Uh, we, want, we want less than one volume of CO2 in the beer. So uh, typically a lager might have between 2.6 and 2.8 volumes of CO2 in it. So that means if you have a thousand liters of beer or lager, you're gonna have 2,600 liters of CO2 dissolved in it, which is quite a lot for if you leave a beer ferment openly naturally it will have about 0.9 to 0.95 volumes in it um, co2 is relatively easy to get into solution and the colder you go the easier it is it's robert boyle boyle's gas laws um, tell us that so uh, nitrogen is a different baby that's really, really hard to get into solution. So you can see on the pressure gauge there, we had the tank at 0.5 bar, which is about seven odd, 700 bit PSI. And the, if the tank is at uh, kind of one, two degrees, it's really easy for the CO2 to get in at that pressure. Um, with nitrogen, we need 10 bar. So almost 20 times the pressure um, for it to get in and there's no fermentation vessel um, that we know of that could take that kind of pressure it's it's hard to it needs to be hammered into solution to do it so uh, what do we do we take the beer um, out of the bright tank it goes through a pump and goes back into the bright tank so uh, we take it out of the fermenter and it goes into one of our conditioning tanks, into one of our bright tanks. And so there we know there's no yeast sediment, there's no hop residue, it's just bright beer, hence, hopefully, hence called a bright beer tank. 
and that's a place where we can condition the beer in. So we made um, this. So being engineering background and such, um, this is a model that's used by a few of the uh, small breweries. You can't just go on the internet and buy a nitrogenator because nitro stout is just such an Irish thing that most of the countries do it by other odd methods of trying to do it in the tank through a carbonation stone and venting pressure and breathe up and leave it down and up and down for a week and nonsense. Um, so there's a proper way um, of doing it in about 20 minutes. So what we have here is a multi-stage centrifugal pump. So the pump will run at about 10 bar. Our beer will come in through um, the two inch line, the fat line there, into the tank, into the um, pump, through all this series of bends, which uh, does two things. It adds contact time with the nitrogen and the beer, and it also forms resistance. So there's a pressure drop um, over the length of, the, of all the tubing. And then finally, it has to go through a restrictor down here to quite a small size, um, and that creates the... We'll run the nitrogenator for uh, not too long, kind of 20 minutes, um, and we test it regularly. So the beer is at between zero and one degree Celsius. Again, back to Robert Boyle, the colder um, it is, the easier it is to, to get into solution. And we're running the tank at 1.9 bar. So to the gauge, everything's probably backwards now on the front facing camera. So 1.9 bar. Um, and we'll feed in nitrogen throughout the process that we're going. And the volume is really small. Like we said earlier, that we're talking about 2.6 volumes for lager. Um, an ale, a pale ale or um, a standard stout, which is still an ale, is uh, generally about 2.4. You don't want a CO2 bite. You don't want too much carbonation in it. But for nitro, we're talking tiny. Like if we're running uh, kind of three to five liters a minute over 20 minutes for 2,000 liters, that's at about 60 odd liters of um, nitrogen. So it's tiny. Now, there's a few things you need to be really careful of when you're kegging. There's such a small volume of nitrogen in there. If you allow it to uh, depressurize for more than a moment, that comes out a solution and you will never get it back in in the keg. So if you're tapping a keg or uh, an eye kegger that we do and you depressurize the keg, the nitrogen will come out a solution in the keg. It'll probably look fantastic inside there with the cascading. But unfortunately, that's no good for drinking after. Well, it'll taste the same, but you just won't have the same effect. You won't have the big creamy head, which is the reason what we're doing all this. The resistancy is a huge, huge thing and, and quite hard to do. And the smaller you're, you are, the harder it is to do. You have to remember that the big guys um, are brewing 8, 10, 15, 20 brews into the same vessel. And any slight variance between them just gets eliminated uh, against your averages, and it's the same for the whole lot. Whereas small brewers like us, we're brewing uh, generally 20 or 40 hectoliters at a time, uh, two or 4,000 liters, and we do a single batch process. So it goes in, it's uh, start to finish, it's all the one. So you've got to pay really close attention to the details and the small things to make sure it's all the same. So after all that, um, I suppose we're gonna see what it's like in the tank. So this is one of the pleasures of brewing, having, uh, having to sample. Everything we do is cleaning, really. You think brewing is laying around on sacks of malt and sipping beers and trying different things. It's not really, it's cleaning, 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 cleaning. Um, so, but there are some really, really good perks. You, know, you all know the difference in a can of stout compared to the keg. It's meh, it'll do. So 
if you can think, and, and so fresh keg is fantastic in a, in a bar that's turning over the product well. There's not a huge distance for, of lines for the beer to run in. Um, and if it's moving, there's, you can have a keg every day or every two days or whatever. It's, it's super fresh once it's tapped and it's fantastic. So that's the difference between a can and keg. So if you take that difference and now you add that onto keg, the difference between keg and what's inside here is just amazing. I wish you could all experience this. So what I'm going to do is set the camera down. I'm going to show you the pour. It's going to look a bit different than uh, what you're getting in the pub. It's a lot, lot more creamier. Some of that nitrogen is going to be lost when you're filling kegs as a, just a result of the way it's done. Um, can't do anything about it. So it has to be a bit more for us here than when it goes into the keg. So I'll set the camera down. I'll show you this. This is, this is lovely. Okay, so here we go. Here's our tap, stout tap, which you see, we just have it loose in a line. Onto our tank. Uh, pretty short run of line. A tap shut. We'll open our tank valve. Everything gentle. Just going to knock a bit out whatever is in the line. So when we're filling it, or when we're nitroing it, we need it. What we say is we want it pouring white. I'm just using something to shut it off there. Shut our tank valve. So this takes ages to settle. But it is, it's super fantastic. You don't want to be drinking now. Leave it all settle. Um, leave the head form. We get, uh, we kind of look twice at lads when they come over visiting Ireland and a pint is put out on the counter and they take, they start drinking it like this and we're going, what are you doing? That's not, that's not how we do it. Um, so I'm going to leave this settle. Okay, we're about a minute in. Still settling. And what you can see there, it looks like uh, it's cascading down. But what you're, what's actually happening is the nitrogen that's in the beer is broken out and the nitrogen is tiny, tiny bubbles. They're all coming to the surface. So it's actually the nitrogen is rising up to the surface, creating that thick head. That effect is called cascading. So it can be a bit of a, bit of a ritual, single pour, two pour. Um, I promise you, if you were blind tasting the two, you'd have no idea. It's a bit of a Chinese tea ritual. Lots in the ritual, the waiting, um, marketing, whatever. So you saw that, that was a single pour. And you can do either. Look, two pour makes you happy, do your two pour. Okay, we'll give it another minute. Then we get to taste. Okay, we're about two and a bit minutes in. Just touching his nose. Slightly bigger head than we would be having when it's poured in the bar. I said we're going to lose some of that as we're kegging, so we need to overdo it. We do what we call a nipple test. Is the peak staying in it? I'm sure if the camera picks that up or not. It is. So, there's... Um, there's only one thing left to do, really. So, hope you guys have a great Christmas. Stout season. Nine weight there. We call it the smoothest stout in the country. So, we took the recipe way back to a list of cereals like oats, uh, green barley, um, some really fantastic Irish cereals to make Irish stout. Um, it's how I used to remember it. Not, uh, it's things get watered down as time goes on, and uh, when it, things get commoditized, then it gets cheapened. Uh, we don't need to do that. So we just want to make the best product there is. So if you remember, uh, stout of old, try a pint of stag stout on draft. You can get an eye keggers, 
Um, we sell 20 liter one way kegs. There's no deposit required, whatever. We'll ship it to you. No problem. If you want gas, we can sort that out too. If you want a full bar system, we can sort that out. So whatever you want. This one's mine now. Oh God, Sontan. 